Hey gang, it's Demir Bentley from Lifehack Method. I keep getting inundated with questions from you on how to use Zoom. Zoom has become part of the texture of our life now, but it's new to a lot of people. Now I've been using it for the last five years. I thought everybody knew how to use it. And the truth is a lot of people don't. And no one wants to be the first person to raise their hand and say, oh, I don't know how to use Zoom. So I'm creating this series of videos to teach you everything I know about how to be the coolest kid in the Zoom room. Let's get started. Now, gang, this is a part of a series where I'm going to show you everything I know about Zoom so you can become the Zoom rock star. But first, let's take a step back and talk about the basics. Now, I was going to go create a basics video that showed you everything, and I realized there's already one on YouTube. I'm going to link it below. Now, the video is by Ben Baldwin. He did an incredible job. I think he covered almost everything. There's just a few things I want to add to that video. So first, go watch that video by Ben Baldwin and consider liking and subscribing, and then come back here and I'm gonna build on top of what Ben did and just add a couple things that I think he didn't cover. Now, here's the first thing I hear all the time. Should I get a free or a paid account? Now, if you're new to Zoom, there's a 99.99% chance you just need the free account. Paid accounts are really for people who wanna create rooms, who wanna customize all their settings. You know, most people are just visiting somebody else's room. Let me give you an example. I'm a coach. I have a paid account. My clients, are visiting my room so they don't need the paid account. So if you're just visiting other people's rooms, chances are you just need a free account and you can sign up with your name and your email. Now, as a nice side benefit of that, you can also host people with a 45 minute limit and have unlimited one-on-one -on -one meetings. So, so much the better. So if you're even asking yourself, should I get a paid or free account? The answer is likely you should just get a free. But let me just speak to the minority here for a second, people who actually should get a paid account. This would be the person who is quickly in this environment trying to take their business online. And I would recommend for them always start with the first tier of the paid plan, the pro plan that gives you unlimited meetings, as many people as you want in meetings for as long as you want. Now, there's also these cool little add-ons that they can give you. So you can have the pro plan, but then add on webinars. Now we have that webinar add-on for I think $40 a month because that's one of our core marketing strategies. We host webinars. If you don't host webinars, you don't need that add-on. Gang, I'm not gonna go line by line through all of the tiers and the add-ons and the features. I'll just say that if you know that you're taking your business online quickly, at the very minimum, you need to get the pro plan. It's gonna have 90% of everything that you need. And at $14.99 a month, it's kind of a no-brainer. It's probably one of the cheapest things you can do to help your business transition online. Another thing I hear all the time is I get confused about the Zoom rooms. And that makes sense. You know, honestly, Zoom kind of released a bunch of cool features but didn't explain them. So let me simplify it for you a bit. I'm gonna skip some steps and get to what actually I think you need to know here. First, most people can just use their personal Zoom room for almost every need that they have in Zoom. You really don't need to overcomplicate it here. Your personal Zoom room is sort of like your default room. So then you might ask, why would you create all these other rooms? Well, the first reason is to make sure that nobody stumbles into the wrong meeting. For example, right now I have a super high profile client who signed an NDA. He doesn't want anybody to know that I'm working with them. Let's call him Larry. Now, if Larry is using the same Zoom room as the rest of my clients, there's a chance that one of them could pop in at any time and violate my NDA. Here's another example. My mom's a therapist who does telemedicine. You have HIPAA laws where you need to stay compliant with anonymity. So if each client can have their own room, there's really no worry of somebody popping into a session that they shouldn't be in. But that's not all. You can also customize the setting of each Zoom room. So there's tons of settings that you can toggle on and off, so many that I can't even get to them here. And Zoom really doesn't explain this well, but take it for granted that each room can have a lot of different settings applied to it. You could have a room that on one side is very lenient, anybody can pop in, anybody can record, anybody can control the screen. All the way on the other side, you could have a Zoom room that's very strict. Nobody can pop in. There's a waiting room that you have to let people in and nobody can touch any of the controls. So it's sort of cool when you think about it that Zoom does give you the opportunity to not just create one type of room, but to create many types of rooms. Now, I personally do a lot of one-time events like live webinars or one-time weekend training. These events tend to have a lot of people that come into them, people that I don't know really well. I would never use my personal Zoom link for an event like that. We're gonna have 500 random people that I've never met before. Why? Because now they have the link to my private Zoom room. So what I'll do is I'll create a completely separate, fresh new room just for that training. 
And also, this is a small thing, but when you record a meeting, it saves the name of that room that you're in as the name of the recording. So if you're recording every single meeting in the same room, it's going to be challenging for you to go find the recording of a one-time event from a huge list of recordings. That's a small thing, but again, yet another thing that makes it convenient. So I guess that's a very oversimplified version of why Zoom even has extra rooms and what you'd even want to use them for. Here's another thing I hear all the time, confusion around the idea of scheduling a room. Now, when you create a room, Zoom really pushes this idea that it wants you to choose a specific time and date for that room. And honestly, I have no idea why they do that. It sucks. Yeah, you heard me right. This feature of Zoom absolutely sucks. So instead, what I recommend that you do is make all of your events evergreen events, recurring events. There's an exception for one-time events, but let's ignore that for a second. Let me show you how to do this. So when you go to schedule a new meeting, Zoom actually defaults you. It forces you to ask, answer all these questions about when and how long it's going to be. And then it pops you into your Google. I mean, it is terrible, terrible, terrible. Zoom, if you're watching, please change this. Here's how to avoid that. Go down here and click this button, recurring meeting. Now it's going to ask you what kind of recurrence, daily, weekly. Also, this sucks too. Just go down to no fixed time. This is what you really want. Zoom makes you step through two extra hoops just to get to a place where you can create a meeting and that meeting is always open anytime anybody can come to it. Now, if you miss that, rewind the video and go back and watch it again. But believe me, you definitely for 99.9% .9 of your uses in Zoom want to be creating recurring meetings. Now, while we're in here, also, unless this is a highly confidential meeting, turn off require meeting password, and then you can save it. Now, once you've created an evergreen link, you're gonna just wanna share that into your calendar invites, just like you'd share any location for a calendar invite. Let me show you what that looks like. So let's say that you're a Pilates instructor and you wanna create a recurring calendar invite for Bob. So you create the calendar invite, maybe Bob Pilates appointment, and you want it to recur maybe every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Great. Now, all you're gonna do is simply down here in location, and maybe down in the description, if you wanna be thorough, you're going to add the Zoom room. So once you grab the Zoom link, you're just gonna paste the Zoom link in right there. And for thoroughness, I'll also post paste it in the description. Now, the way that you can find this is you can simply go in and you can copy the invitation here. And that's the entire invitation. So you can copy this meeting invitation. And you can go down here, put it in the description. But I often like to just take the Zoom meeting link and put it right there. And then, you know, I'll invite Bob, whoever Bob might be. I'll put Bob's name in here and I'll send the invite to Bob. And now what's gonna happen is Bob is gonna get that invite every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday for the foreseeable future. Great, fantastic. Now, Bob is just gonna see this invite in his calendar every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday for the foreseeable future. And when he clicks on it, conveniently, the link is gonna be here and the link is gonna be here and he knows exactly how to access. That, my friends, is how you create a calendar event with Zoom. You just create an evergreen Zoom link and then you drop the Zoom link into Google Calendar or Microsoft Calendar like a normal human being. The way that Zoom is gonna try to have you do it is going to mess you up. Just hack around it, don't even engage it. So again, you're a Pilates instructor, you're not gonna to wanna to create a different room for every single client. It's just not necessary. Create one room and then every client has the same link and then you don't need to mess around with different links and then at the end of your meeting, you gotta log in and re-log into another room. Ugh, overcomplicated. Keep it simple, stupid. One recurring meeting link and drop it into calendar invites in Google or Microsoft. Now, if you're my mom and you're a therapist or you're a lawyer and you've got a lot of confidentiality and security, and you wanna really get deep into rooms, there's a lot of videos online. Go watch them and educate yourself about how to use Zoom rooms. But this, my friends, is a basic video. And for most basic use cases, this is all you're gonna need. Now, another thing that absolutely needs to be covered is all the cool features that Zoom packs into their preferences window. And a lot of people don't know these are there. So I wanna take a second now and I wanna go through and look at all that they offer. So there's two ways that you can access all the cool stuff that Zoom has to offer. The first way is to actually log in through the web to your Zoom profile. Now here you can access all of your meetings and customize the settings on each and every one of your meetings. You can also go down here to settings and this will allow you to customize the default for any new room. So for example, host video starts on. 
If I click that on, that means every new room that I make in the future, my video, when somebody logs in, is going to be on automatically. Maybe I want that, and maybe I wanna check and make sure I don't have salad in my teeth. But I can also customize the individual settings. So I can go into this meeting, and I can go down to edit this meeting, and inside of this meeting, I can also say that actually I want it to be on or I want it to be off. So as you can see, there's a lot of options here and Zoom gives you the option to sort of set everything to the same setting or dive into each and every meeting and tweak the settings on each and every meeting. Again, as a basic user, you probably don't need to know this stuff, but it's easy to go onto YouTube and find out about it if you wanna become a little bit more advanced. Parentheses, if this is your business and you're taking your business online, you should probably invest 30 minutes to 90 minutes to get good at this stuff. It's not hard. Now, since this is a basic tutorial, I'm not gonna go through each and every feature. Like I said, lots of videos out there. You can explore yourself. I wanna move on to what's available to you inside of the desktop app for Zoom. This, my friends, is the desktop version of Zoom. I've downloaded it to my computer, and this is what it looks like when you're actually running it on your computer. Now, I want you to follow my cursor and go up here, and you can see up here, when you click the top left, it says zoom.us, and you can go down to preferences. Let's check that out. Now, I'm not gonna go through every single one of these, but I'm gonna highlight some of the things you should know about. This use dual monitors function is pretty darn cool for people who have two monitors, so you should use that. And I definitely think you should check the box that says, ask me to confirm when I leave a meeting. Gang, it happens a lot that people try to leave a meeting and they end up accidentally ending the whole meeting while other people are on the meeting. So that's handy. Let's also talk about the video tab. Let's go over here to the video tab. So many awesome settings in here. Now, I would definitely select the 16.9 widescreen format. Why? Because sometimes I like to chop this up for a YouTube video or turn it into a training or an SOP, and it, it just is a better format for editing as a video. If you don't care about that, you could certainly do original ratio. Also, enable HD is an important function to have on. Um, I think it just makes you a little bit sharper. If you're suffering from bandwidth, though, you might want to turn that off. That could be the first thing you turn off to try to save some bandwidth. Now this one here is fun, touch up my appearance. What touch up my appearance does is it simply sort of applies almost like a thin layer of makeup to just smooth out any blotches. Now for us men, maybe we don't care, but for many women, they feel like they don't wanna get on video because they haven't applied any makeup and this will apply makeup for you. Toggle it on and off, you'll see that it makes a difference. Now the rest of these are pretty self-explanatory and not mission critical, so I'll let you explore that yourself. Now. In the audio tab, I'm gonna save this for my full advanced training, but you know, needless to say, every single time you do a call, you should test your speaker and test your mic. It's just good practice. Now let's check out the share screen function. Now, the first thing I would do is I would turn off this enter full screen mode. This actually freaks people out because when you go full screen, it sort of takes over the computer. All they have to do is push escape, but they don't know that and it just freaks people out. So turn it off. I'd also turn off the show zoom windows option. I'm not gonna turn it off now because that would undo my ability to show you, but click this off. You don't want your Zoom windows showing during your screen sharing 99% of the time. And this is an awesome one, silence system notifications when sharing desktop. Ooh, so awesome. It means you won't get any embarrassing notifications if somebody emails or texts you. Definitely use that one. Gang, if you're gonna use a virtual background, which is becoming really popular, use something like really plain Jane, like not attention grabbing. A lot of people are using backgrounds that are screaming out and distracting. Just don't do it. Keep your background simple if you're gonna use a background at all. And again, I highly recommend using a background. If you're facing an open room, your spouse is gonna come through naked or your kid is gonna come through naked, but it's recording. That creates liability for people actually. Just save them and save yourself and use some kind of background if you're facing back into a room where people could be walking around. Now the recording tab has some really cool stuff. First, it shows you where your recordings are being stored. You're probably gonna wanna know that. You can also record a separate audio file for each participant. That's cool if you're doing interviews or podcasts. It prevents garbled audio when you guys are talking to each other. And also optimize for third-party video. That just means it'll give you a higher quality video if you wanna edit it later. Now that makes it harder on your bandwidth. So if you have less bandwidth, you might wanna uncheck that. And I never add a timestamp to the recordings. It's there. I just don't like it. Now the cloud recording function in Zoom is really cool, but lately the meetings are taking way long to render. So if time is of the essence and you need that recording soon, watch out for the cloud recordings for now. And the only thing, other thing I'm gonna show you guys is the keyboard shortcuts. Now I'm gonna dive into this way more in the advanced training, but just for now, man, if you're a business owner, memorize a couple of these shortcuts, man, it is just so helpful. 
I'm not going to go through all of them, but here are my favorites. Mute, unmute, oh, crucial. Um, Multicam toggling, if you have multiple cameras, I'll talk about that in my advanced training. And switching between speaker and gallery view, also raising and lowering your hand. These are all really crucial things to know. Now, I get a lot of questions too. Should I be updating my settings of my room on the desktop or online? I mean, they'll reflect on both sides, but I would just say use the website. Why? I think it's easier to understand what you're doing there. You can tweak more, you have more control, and everything you do on the website is going to just migrate through to the desktop. Okay, guys, that's it. Shout out to Ben Balden for his basic Zoom training. Thank you, Ben, so that I didn't have to go back and do all of that. I just wanted to add a layer of pro tips and some lingering questions that I get that maybe weren't covered in Ben's video. Now, just by watching Ben's and this, you'll, you're gonna be better than 90% of the people out there on Zoom. But again, if you wanna be the coolest kid on the block, check out the advanced Zoom training that I'm gonna drop shortly. And remember, everything you need to know about Zoom is gonna be on YouTube. So don't be shy, go look it up. Thanks, gang. If you like these videos, give me a subscribe and a thumbs up, and I'll see you in the next video.